Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Yeah. Hello and welcome back, my power people. It's a pleasure to have you here. And here we go, continuing our maneuvering through this deep and wide treasure chest of Volume 1 of Ingo Swan's Secrets of Power. Today, it's Chapter 18, and we've got two excerpts for today. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful chapter, Chapter 18. I am Mr. Douglas, and you are here with me, Mr. Douglas. So, Chapter 18, the title is Closed Loop Versions of Power which is another way of describing encapsulated power format structures. Academia is a closed-loop power structure. you got to do certain things to climb up that ladder. The scientific industry is a closed-loop power structure. Hollywood is a particularly closed-loop power structure. There are certain things you've got to do. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, so, the um, chapter begins by simply laying down the base that it is natural to be interested in power, especially in areas of activity that you find yourself in, in your life. Who doesn't want more power in their lives? It is why we are here. It's what attracted me to the books in the first place. And any knowledge about power at all is always going to be better than no power knowledge in your life, in anybody's life. But there's an ish when it comes to power structures that we're participating in that we, you know, I mean, this, this, there's the structure that's set up that we all got to exist in. And that's when we participate in these power structures, it empowers the structure and those that have constructed and maintained it and are maintaining it, not us. And that's another example of a closed loop situation within the power structure. Ingo says success or failure is basically governed by operating through and behaving in approved ways, reality boxes, frames of reference, mind frames, that these closed-loop power formats deem to be okie-dokie. And then there's another issue, is that even if you do come by and are able to express some modicum of power in one closed-loop power structure, that power might not really transfer over uh, or translate into another closed-loop power structure, because it's only applicable in the one. All of this to lead us into the first excerpt, which is all about the vicissitudes of power. Let's swim right into it, shall we? It is quite usual to construct a model for empowerment for the different worlds of activity based on what can easily be seen in some objective way. However, most power systems are also encapsulated with hidden situations, and which themselves are based on hidden frames of reference. The first of the hidden situations involved with those worlds is the fact that not only are they largely transitory in nature, but the personnel achieving or manifesting power within them are decidedly transitory. Even the modalities of power within them can change at any given time. Some of the modalities can suddenly become inefficient, politically incorrect, retro, moribund, undesirable, even incomprehensible. Indeed, one of the working characteristics of Machiavellian stealth power techniques is to deliberately cause power modalities to change so that the existing power people can be dethroned and new upcoming ones can claim installation in their place. There are some recognizable fallouts of this. If, for example, one is utilizing the empowerment criteria and frames of reference of one of the transient power worlds, one can easily be not very knowledgeable with regard to other power worlds. One can even wind up being not very knowledgeable about a selected world of power and empowerment if that world undergoes change, which it eventually will. The foregoing observations apply to societal, group, and individual power and empowerment formats, all of which are temporary and transient to one degree or another. It is in this kind of thing that obviously inspired the old axiom that power is fickle, and also brought about the expression regarding the vicissitudes of power. Vicissitude refers to the quality or state of being changeable, natural change or mutation, visible in nature or in human affairs. (laughs) 
Right? What a word, vicissitude. I don't think I've ever heard someone say that in conversation in my life, but here we are, vicissitude. It's fun to say once you get your mouth around it. The month of March often expresses vicissitude when it comes to the weather and temperature, because it was 70 degrees and sunny yesterday, and today it is like 45 and it's raining and it's windy. Come on, March. Would you chill with your vicissitude? I know, it's almost April, but still. So, you know, the excerpt begins when you're pursuing empowerment, like we discussed. It's usual to kind of build up lattices, models, pathways, routines that we would assume that would lead to some empowerment based on what's right in front of us, what we're bumping up against. But these power systems, they got their labyrinthine setup buried beneath the already foggy hedge maze that we are weaving our way through. And Ingo brings up the fact that these worlds of activity are always shifting and changing in one way or another. Nothing is ever stagnant or stable or in place. Power moves, baby. Consider the changes, at least on the face, of the American political dynasties. You used to have the Roosevelts and the Kennedys. Now you've got the Bidens. And more recently, in history, the Bushes. Eh, discontent. Moving on. Inevitably, Ingo says, the people are going to change within these setups too. And even the expressions within these power structures are going to change. Way back when, uh, when it comes to paying for stuff, it used to be you'd give uh, the cashier the credit card that you had, and they would go sink, sink on that credit card copier, and they'd give you a physical receipt copy. And that paper was like super toxic. I think it still is. <laughs> now it's just tap and go, right? Tap, slide, swipe, bing, bang, boom. Very different. As it comes to power, power is not stagnant. Everything when it comes to power has got energy, and so everything is in some kind of flux. And I find it fascinating, you know, that, that, that little Machiavellian tilt that Ingo brings attention to, that absolute tactic of inducing change in power modalities. Cause that chaos. Grab some power. Shift and change the pieces on the board. I don't like that it happens. I don't like that it's happening. But it's a cool reference. And certainly something to have in mind. What is that saying that we hear more and more of? Never let a good crisis go to waste. Definitely reminds me of that Machiavellian tactic. All this to say, it's tough to know what to focus on and lean into because power is always shifting and changing. At least expressions of it within our given power structure, closed loop modality situations that we find ourselves in, right? As a personal example, when I was in elementary school, I learned how to move the turtle. Yes, I'm dating myself. Way back when, F9 to F12, enter, move the turtle, and I'd be able to like draw stuff, really basic stuff. You could make the screen uh, sparkle. It was really, really simple. I think it was like pre-MS-DOS. They were on Macintoshes, not Macs, Macintoshes. So that kind of computer programming that I was exposed to at a very young age, that hasn't helped me at all. That is an example of the ever-changing sands of time when it comes to power. However, I did also learn typing at a young age, like really quick typing. Uh, Mavis Beacon teaches typing. They had a driving challenge in that where, uh, you know, you type and the faster you type, the faster the car would go. But every time you'd screw up a letter... A bug would bat on the windshield. <laughs> and uh, I got a lot of bug splats, definitely, for quite some time. Sometimes I do it on purpose just because it was funny. Anyway, typing, typing has lasted the test of time still. I don't know for how much longer. But to be able to type, that is a great way to interface, interact, and express perspective. The entirety of all of this, as Ingo says, can be summed up in the saying, power is fickle. And it is. Now, this was all to build the understanding that power is not something simple to grasp and hold on to. It's not a one and doneer, especially when it comes to the power structures, like I had said. But now we come to an excerpt from the very same chapter. This excerpt comes from the segment that Ingo entitles "Staying Power." You might just be thinking, "Hey." You just told me that power is like goop or gek or something that's always shifting and changing. Yes, and, for those improv lovers, 
There is also staying power. And Ingo brings our attention to stealth power here, which has been mentioned and discussed in brief previously. Let's spread on the excerpt for more. But it is a form of in-depth examination of stealth power wars that a clue emerges regarding the nature of staying power. That clue is this. Anyone who does become at least somewhat proficient in stealth power cannot possibly think only in terms of existing formats and models set up at the societal, group, or individual power levels. The reason is that those formats and models are based in limited frames of reference that feed back upon themselves in closed-loop kinds of ways. In high contrast, proficient stealth power activity must be based on factors that transcend the limits of closed power loop activities in order to survive the changes that go on within them. It is therefore obvious that staying power is closely related not to limited frames of reference, but to other power factors that transcend them. So, staying power is any kind of power factor that transcends this closed-loop power format structure situation. Just look at my typing example, right? Versus the move the turtle example that I <laughs> said earlier. Typing is a kind of staying power. Uh, but staying power isn't forever power. Again, this is not a grasp and hold and one and done situation. Never. I am reminded of the ancient Chinese saying, the only thing constant is change. But a direction to focus the light of your powerful mind in might be shining on power factors, power expressions, frames of reference that are more universal. Ingo makes this point towards the end of the chapter. These can be applied to multiple power structures and closed-loop power setups. They would have positive and long-lasting impact on your living experience. Like getting a good night's sleep regularly is an expression of power, which would be under the category of optimizing self-care. Finding the daily rhythm that works best for you. Eating more greens. Exploring and discovering frames of reference that transcend closed-loop versions of power. That one basic foundational frame of reference that I like, again, is that we are a power species and that if you are alive, you have power. You are expressing power. Another one that I like that, again, is very universal is that one of those powers that everybody has is the power of problem solving. That is innate within us. We want to solve problems. Just look what happens when you watch a murder mystery. Who did it? You want to figure it out. That is, that is an innate thing that just happens. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to find out who the killer is. We do that. That is automatic. And that's automatic everywhere. That problem-solving mind system is built in us all. That is innate. That, I think, is a frame of reference, a power factor to hold on to and maintain cognizance of in whatever situation you may find yourself in. And there are myriad kinds of mind frames for us all to find individual empowerment through and ever-increasing expressions of our own power within for the betterment of everybody. Hey, that was fun, huh? Chapter 18. Thank you for hanging. I appreciate it. If you are enjoying this and you really want to get deep, you want the full main course meal and all its accoutrements, you can get the entirety of this book in audio format, which I myself have narrated. I've been so lucky to narrate them both. I'm working on volume two, but you can find volume one. It's out now on Audible. If you visit my website, M-I-S-T-3-R-D-O-U-G-L-A-S dot com. That's Mr. Douglas dot com. I got a page there which you can click around, find it there. There should be a link in the description. And if you're enjoying these empowering frames of reference, absolutely check out ingoswan.com, the website where you can find out more about the man himself and all his wonderful works. 
I-N-G-O-S-W-A-N-N.com. Muchos gracias for joining me today. I had a wonderful time discussing Chapter 18 with you. And I look forward to Chapter 19. As always, more power to you. And like I said before, thanks for hanging. Don't forget to eat your greens. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,